What is up, my boys? It is your boy Nisho here, and I got something a little different for you guys today. Um, so if you watch my uh, Cyframes being used as an engine video, um, I did spotlight a few deck profiles, and um, one of them that I did spotlight was uh, True Draco's Metaphors Cosmo, and as I admitted at the time, um, I didn't know how the deck would work, and uh, I wanted to try it out on a, lit uh, a later date. And so uh, that's kind of what I did. I just pretty much just took the entire deck profile and just copied and pasted it from the OCG to the TCG. With there being a few problems. Uh, one is that since we don't have the same ban list, um, I had to switch in a few ratios. So the first being a uh, Dark Destroyer being at three in the OCG, we only have it at one over here. So what I put in in replacement for the other two Dark Destroyers was one Dark Eclipser um, because Pretty much, your the reason why you play Triple Dark Destroyer is because of a uh, Draconic Diagram. And so, um, you pretty much just want to get something off of your pop. And Dark Eclipser kind of does the same thing, so I thought it would be just an uh, okay um, filler card. And the other one would be Call of the Haunted that we see here. But, um, you know, Call of the Haunted is just to bring back one of the Dark Destroyers that was destroyed. And uh, secondly, they have a Harpy's Fighter Dust over here over there but we have uh we don't have harpy's fighter, fighter duster yet so i just put in a storm um storm isn't really all that great but you can play it uh like in this deck just because you have a lot of cards uh, spell and trap cards that benefit when they're popped like metaphors fusion uh the true draco card cosmo town and metaphors combination so you can get plus off of popping your own cards you know and that's kind of how this deck works anyway, so I thought it, it worked well with the theme of the deck, but you can just put in something like Twin Twisters, or just not even put in, like, that card at all. Since we're playing over 40, you can just take out um, the card slot, and you would still be good. Also, in the side deck, uh, they have Vanity's Emptiness over there, and we don't. They also have 3 Max C, and we don't, so I copy the entire extra deck, including the side frames, I mean extra deck, side deck. Um, well, I copied the extra deck as well, but I copied the entire side deck, um, including the side frames, which I didn't get a chance to, to try out, uh, sadly, but um, they, um, they're they pretty much, it's pretty much straightforward what they do. So, um, instead of there being three max C, I put in three dimensional barriers. So, to replace the Vanity's Emptiness and the two max C, I put in three Vanity's, I mean, three dimensional barrier. Uh, to make it, you know, TCG legal, um... That's really the whole idea of this deck. Uh, it's, it's a TCG version of True Draco's Metaphors Cosmo. Um, so, you know, starting off, let's just uh, start off with the deck profile, and I'll explain everything as we go, because there is a lot to explain in this deck. So, first off, we have the, the Metaphors, uh, Metaphors Gold Driver. Um, if you don't know what Metaphors do, they all do the same thing. Uh, so, you just pop one other card you control, uh, a face-up card you control, and you set a Metaphor Spawn Trap card from your deck. And uh, usually that can trigger a lot of uh, effects, because you can target any face-up card you control, monster, spell, or trap, pop it, and then set. So, yeah. Um, it's pretty straightforward, so we run three Glow Driver, two Silver, and two Stealin'. Uh, they also are Pendulums that have a scale of one to eight. And so, it's funny how he doesn't run the same number of... Uh, scale ones and scale eights. Um, he he only uses three scale eights, but yet five scale ones. So um, it, some people might see that as, as a little risky, but um, for me, um, it worked out fine. So yeah. So we have one Dark Eclipser, which is the replacement for Dark Destroyer, because um, in use, it's kind of it's, it's kind of going to be used the same way, although it won't be doing the exact same thing. So just like Dark Destroyer, it can be targeted by your opponent's card effects. During your player's turn, when trap card is activated, you can banish a Cosmo monster from your graveyard, negate the activation if you do destroy that card. And, um, Dark Eclipser isn't something that you're gonna summon that often, like, I, I, I don't even think I summoned it. Like, maybe once I had the, the chance to summon it, and uh, I don't even think I needed it at that point. And then, uh, when he, so the reason why I use him is because if he's destroyed by battle or by card effect and sent to the graveyard, banish this card from your graveyard, add one level 8 or lower Cosmo monster from your deck to your hand. 
The problem with him is that he adds and he doesn't special summon. Every other Cosmo um, that has an effect on what is destroyed, they special summon after they're destroyed. Um, he's the one that adds to your hand. So, although he does search you, Dark Destroyer, um, it is a little... Um, it does slow, slow you down a tiny bit. But if you have multiple cards that pop, um, it won't really be a big deal. So, Dark Destroyer, uh, he's kind of like... Well... I'm, I'm assuming that in the OCG build, he was like the engine of the deck because he got you Cosmos for free. Like, uh, let's say you had a Draconic Diagram and a Dark Destroyer in your hand and you had like a combination set. Um, maybe you could pop your Dark Destroyer, especially coming out Slip Rider, and then uh, Slip Rider could pop um, your combination and search you a Metal Foe. Or, um, you know, you just use uh, Dark Destroyer to get you like a Farm Girl or a Dark Lady, um, in case you need to be more offensive during the turn. So it definitely gave, it's kind of like a toolbox, um, using it with a uh, Draconic Diagram, so, which I kind of like. So um, it definitely was interesting to play. And uh, next off, we have the big beef uh, of the deck. Uh, we got Masterpiece, a true Draco, Draco Slaying King. I, I, it's, it's always a tongue, tw uh, tongue twister for me, um, some of these uh, card names. But... Um, so, you know, for his Tribute Summon, if you don't know, he can use uh, Continuous Bone Trap Cards, which works well with the Metal Foes, since they can set a Continuous Trap Card from their deck. Uh, Metal Foes Combination, which also searches you another Metal Foe when it's sent to the graveyard. So it works very well with uh, Masterpiece. And we also have um, another True Draco Spell Card, which um, also pops the Spell Trap Card when it's sent from the field to the graveyard. So, um... Him being able to use spell and trap cards for a tribute summon not only makes him a lot better as a card, but um, when he tributes, um, so he's unaffected by the type of cards that he used for his tribute summon. So if he used monsters and spells, he's unaffected by all monster and spell uh, effects. If he used monster and traps, he's unaffected by all monster and trap effects. If he used um, traps and spells, he's all he's unaffected by all spell and trap effects. So it's definitely very useful. And uh, his third effect just is the icing on the cake, where once per turn during either player's turn, if this card was tribute summoned, you could banish one continuous spell and chop card from your graveyard and target one other card in the field and destroy it. Um, sadly, it does target, but um, on that same note, he does uh, get rid of um, cards. It's a quick effect, so it's, um, it's kind of um, understandable why they would make him target, because if he had a quick effect where he didn't target, I think that would just be um, amazing, like just, I mean, the card's already amazing, <laughs> it's like a, a $40 secret rare, if, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, it would have made him even better than he already is, so, uh, next, we have our Cosmos, and, uh, the Cosmos are pretty much just here for, um, just being Cosmos, it's, it's like Cosmos do Cosmo things, uh, slip riders. It's, it's funny that I saw the two slip rider here, but he wasn't playing Nova or Infinity, and I was like, you know what? Good on you, mate, because you didn't take the gimmick <laughs> and ran uh, Nova and Infinity just because you ran slip rider. I saw a, a, a few Cosmo players in the TCG do that. Um, it's not the best way to use your slip riders, and it might be uh, like a bit of a gimmick because it's because you're. Um, putting all these resources into uh, Infinity, and Infinity might not even, like, it, it might have been better to put all those resources into another thing rather than just Infinity. So, yeah. So we have one Forerunner. Um, he can't be targeted during your snapback phase. You gain a 1,000, um, and he's, if he's popped, you summon a level 6 or lower Cosmo monster from your deck, So which pretty much is every other Cosmo in the deck um, except for the two big ships, the two other big ships. So uh, he is also very good. So if you Dark Eclipser and you already use your Dark Destroyer, then you can search Forerunner, and Forerunner can get you any other Cosmo as well. So it definitely helps. Uh, so Double Slip Rider, when he's normal or special summoned, you can pop a spell trap card on the field, which is nice because a lot of your spell and trap cards work when you're popped, or you can just get rid of your opponent's back row, which makes him even better uh, since, he has, uh, since he gives you the option of which card to destroy. And uh, if he's destroyed by battle or by card effects, you special summon a level four lower Cosmo from your deck. So it's uh, it's okay. So Dark Lady, Dark Lady, I, I love Dark Lady's effect. Um, you can 
Uh, once per turn during either player's turn, when another monster's effect is activated, you pay a thousand and you negate the activation. And if you do, destroy the monster. So uh, she does. It, she like you don't need to play Solemn Strike because you play Dark Lady, and uh, she's kind of searchable because you have Cosmo Town and you have Farm Girl, and you have Dark Destroyer and Dark Eclipser. So she is searchable. Uh, she's easy to access and um, she has a pretty good effect. And also, you know. Um, in Cosmos, there's ships and pilots. She's a pilot, and what the pilots do is during either player's turn, you can banish them, uh, special summon a Cosmo from your hand with a higher level than them. So since she's level five, you can special summon level six or higher Cosmo from your hand, and uh, that would include any of your Forerunner, uh, Dark Destroyer, or Dark Eclipser. Um, so you could banish her, summon out Dark Destroyer. I actually OTK'd someone because I had Farm Girl. Farm Girl banished herself, summon out Dark Lady, attack with Dark Lady, Dark Lady banished herself, summon out Dark Destroyer. It was, it, it's pretty crazy what Cosmos can do, and uh, it's not surprising since they were top tier at one point. So, uh, yeah. So Farm Girl, uh, I'm pretty sure you all know what Farm Girl does, uh, sh but if you don't, she's another pilot, so you banish her, special summon level 4 or higher Cosmo um, from your hand, and um, when he, she inflicts battle damage, you pay 500 and search a Cosmo. Which is very nice because she can attack and then search like a Dark Destroyer and then banish herself to summon a Dark Destroyer during that same battle phase. So not only do you get to pop a card, you also get to have another attack with the monster that you summoned in the same battle phase, which is why she was so good. Um, during the later, um, like when Cosmos first came out, she was like a staple three of, but during the later side of when Cosmos were out, people just started to bring down Horatio, maybe one, maybe two, at most. So, yeah, she was something that was, uh, kind of, uh, became unappreciated in Cosmos. And, uh, it's, it's nice just to, uh, see her again, you know, just to, uh, play this deck. It has been actually pretty fun for me. So, um, next we have Ghost Ash and Beautiful Spring. Again, as I said in my Battling Boxer deck profile, um, there's somebody who's triggered <laughs> when you say the, the OCG name of this card. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I forget the TCG name. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro hasn't updated to the TCG name yet. So, um, yeah, whatever. Let, let, let's, let's not even focus on that, man. Uh, so, what she does is... Uh, she's probably one of the most broken hand traps ever. Um, if not the most broken. So she negates, she has a possibility of, of negating three different types of cards, which is why she's so good, which is why you want to play three of her. Uh, this this guy in the OCG, he sided the third one, which I, I do think is a good call since you're going to use uh, her effect once per turn. But um, when your opponent activates a card effect that would add a card from the main deck to the hand, special summon a monster from the main deck, or send a card from the main deck to the graveyard, pretty much at least one card in every deck. Uh, you can discard this card and negate that effect, and you know you can only use it once per turn. Um, this definitely isn't something like necessary to like win, but it does help you get an advantage over your opponent because sometimes they may be so reliant on like searching or milling or special summoning a certain monster that a card like uh, Ghost Ash and Beautiful Spring that she can just stop that um, gives you an advantage over your opponent, not because you're going plus, but because they can't do their plays, which is why uh, this card is so good. And next we have triple Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Um, <laughs> I actually pendulum summoned her quite a few times, um, which is kind of funny since, you know, she's like both of these uh, Ghost Ash and Ghost Ogre are tuners. So you can use them for synchro summons, which is why you have a few synchros down here. And, um, her effects uh, can activate on the hand or on the field, so you can use it from the hand or the field. Um, well, for Ghost Ash, she's only in the hand, but for Ghost Ogre, you can use her on the field as well. So she can be an 1800 defender that can also use her effect, or you can use it for a synchro summon, or, you know, the, it, it's just the, the, the versatility really is, is, is just what makes this deck so good. Like, the fact that you have so many options with, uh, with all these cards is kind of what makes a meta deck like so good and I don't know if I would call this meta it, it, it did top so you can consider it meta um, so yeah I mean again that's that's just what makes meta deck so good it's just they, they have a lot of options uh, in their cards 
And, you know, like, a weaker decks, like, decks, like, the Battling Boxer deck I did yesterday, I said, you know, like, Konami really, like, undershot a lot of those cards and made them real weak because they, they can't do as much as, like, you know, if, if they just change the wording a little bit, they'll be, they'll be able to do a whole lot more, you know, with a singular card. But, you know, when you can't, when you can do more with one card, that's what makes a card good. But when you can only do less with it, that's what makes it bad. Yeah, so uh, Ghost Ogre was actually real. Um, was actually real nice. Um, I didn't really use its effect as much as I thought I would, but it kind of stops a lot of cards because, although it doesn't negate um, the effects of certain cards, it can stop. Like you, like it can get rid of the card. So like, if they activate like a. I don't know, a monster effect, like, uh, I, I used it when I had, like, Cosmo Dark Lady on the field, so, uh, I popped, um, one of their monsters that tried to use their effect, but it had an effect in the graveyard as well that would act me when it was destroyed, so, um, since I had Dark Lady on the field, I could just pay a thousand and negate that effect, and then, it was pretty much just, I got rid of the card by discarding, uh, Ghost Ogre, so, it, like, Ghost, if I didn't have Ghost Ogre, th that card still would have been on the field. But um, yeah, it, it just it just helps that uh, Ghost Ogre can uh, can get rid of cards like that, you know. So uh, next we have Double Strawman, which in this deck uh, I feel like it would have been like the reason why he played it at two was because he he played Triple Dark Destroyer, and the fact we're not playing Triple Dark Destroyer uh, kind of hinders Strawman. Although in my play testing of this deck, um, I actually never went into start uh, into Strawman. Like I never needed him. I never searched him, and I never joined him, so I never saw him. And it's kind of funny, because he's like... He's kind of like a, a real good Cosmo, because he can bring back your banished Cosmos, but, you know, Cosmo Town can bring back your banished Cosmos as well. So it's like, I never needed him, you know. But he's a quick effect, so... And he's also a pilot, so he can special summon them back too, so... But yeah, I, I never actually needed um, Straw Man. He, he was just... Uh, like, I understand why he's here, but um, you, you, you can probably take him out, <laughs> honestly. Uh, pretty, like, maybe bring him down to one, because you, you, you won't see him as much. So, Rare, uh, rare Metal Flow is Abyss Maguire. I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't know. Uh, he's just any other Metal Flow, except when he's popped uh, on the field, you can, at, uh, during the end of the turn, he's like a Skarm. You get to search a Metal Flow monster from your deck to your hand. So, uh... Honestly, I think I would probably play one more copy, but he can't be Pendulum Summoned, so I understand why he only plays one. You probably you probably want to keep him on scale until you have like another scale eight to pop him, and then you just put that scale eight. Or you know, it, uh, you can just use him as like defense and then search another metal flow next turn. So it's pretty nice. Uh, one tin can, um, I, I like tin can is probably the uh, how do I say the. Uh, you know, like a pantheism of the deck, like the banish effect of pantheism, where you get to search three and then your opponent picks one. Um, so, except you know it's randomly picked. So he's a pilot, so you banish him to summon out a uh, Cosmo that's uh, a higher level than him. And once per turn during the end phase, you pay five hundred, reveal three Cosmo monsters with a different name from deck. Your opponent picks one, and you add it to your hand. Now, this is foolproof when Dark Destroyer is at three. So, like, you just pick up three Dark Destroyers, you get one to your hand, other two to Grave, and you're happy, right? But, you know, unfortunately, this is America, and TCG, we don't have Dark Destroyer on one, so you kind of have to pray that they pick Dark Destroyer. But you do still have Dark Eclipser, and you do still have Forerunner, and Slip Rider, and Dark Lady, so you do still have options. Like, you don't have to just pick Dark Destroyer only, but um, it would have been better um, in the OCG where you had Dr. Destroyer. so. Also, when you use this card with Emergency Teleport, just, uh, don't forget to, um, like, on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, because, um, I didn't have Always Chain on, and, uh, when you don't have Always Chain on, sometimes it, it like, skips, um, activation timings, like, uh, re and response windows, because, you know, it, it just, um, stops some of the messages. And uh, it didn't give me a response window for Tin Can during the end phase, so it just got banished. And that was just my mistake, but um, yeah, just uh, be wary of that. So Storm, uh, it's just Storm. 
Um, Metal Foes Fusion. Uh, he runs quite a lot of fusions and only one Metal Foes Fusion, which I found so funny. It's like he has so much extra deck space dedicated to the Metal Foes, and yet he only runs one Metal Foes Fusion. Like, usually people run at least two. Um, um, well, not two fusions, but like uh, full Metal Foes Fusion and Metal Foes Fusion. And like, or maybe just two fusions, but only playing one is fine. But uh, it's like, especially since with a Draconic Diagram, you just pop it from your hand and then just shuffle it back and draw a card. And then you can, and then if you actually need to use the effect, you can just uh, Metal Foe and then uh, set it again. So it, it, it's always, it, 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 like, it's always been a useful card. It's just... To seeing it, to see it only at one, it, it was it was a bit surprising to me um, how he did that, but uh, it definitely works. So um, we don't question it. So triple terraforming, we're running five uh, field spells in this deck, and uh, field spell searchers are always welcome. Uh, emergency teleport, uh, cosmos are psychics, um, ghost ogre is psychic, um, metal foes are psychic. <laughs> So it definitely works. There's a lot of you have a lot of targets, and although it, it's it's only on one, honestly, you're probably gonna use it on a snow rabbit or a farm girl or a tin can um, if, if it's on your turn. Like first turn, you're gonna use it on tin can. Uh, mid game, you may use it on farm girl. Uh, I don't think you're gonna use it on ghost ogre, honestly, um, unless you know what your opponent is playing, maybe like mid game, but. Um, honestly, uh, I, I just think, like, you're, you're gonna use on either Farb Girl or, uh, Tin Can, so, uh, yeah. Next off, we have, uh, Double Set Rotation, and, uh, Set Rotation is a card that, uh, you, you set two field spells from, um, your deck to both sides of the field, so it can be activated even if there's already a uh, field spell on the field. The thing is, is that, um, you just have to, uh, set them like it's just though the only real condition to um this card is that there has to be um one like each, each of the two field spells have to be different it took me so long just, just to say that um so you set two different field spells on the field one to your side one to your opponent's side and while those two set field spells are on the field so while either of them are on the field actually um neither player can activate field spells and neither player can um set m another field spell um, like over it, so um, you you play Dracon Diagram and, and uh, Cosmo Town, right? So if you actually set rotation, you probably want to put like Cosmo Town on, on their side of the field and Dracon Diagram on yours, or vice versa, de de depending on what you have uh, in your hand. Because um, if you use a uh, like Slip Rider or um. Yeah, I, I guess Slip Rider. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't see any other way to pop spell and trap cards in this deck. Oh yeah, and Storm. If you use Slip Rider, if you use Storm, if you use, um, yeah, I, I guess that's it. Uh, Masterpiece even, or uh, the True Draco uh, spell card that we have here. Um, if you use any of those to pop your opponent's spell card, uh, field spell card, uh, you can. It goes to your graveyard. So if you put Cosmo Town on their side of the field, um, you're going to get a search for Cosmo. Or, um, if you use, like, a, if your opponent is using a, a field spell card and you don't want them to get the, uh, the field spell's effect, you can just activate set rotation since it's a quick play spell card. You can use it during your opponent's turn, set a field spell to their side so they don't get um, to use their field spell. Like, if they're using a, a Draconic Diagram, you can, when they activate a Draconic Diagram, you can use, um... I forgot his name. Set rotation <laughs> and uh, set field spells to both sides of the field. So it not only does it, it like it, it's kind of weird because it does hinder you from activating your field spell. Like um, even like even if your opponents get destroyed, you still can't use yours as long as yours is set. So you'd have to pop your own field spell as well, which is kind of why I play Storm. Uh, I thought Storm was a nice choice, but um, other than that, um, it, it doesn't really uh allow you to like activate your field spells like it doesn't give you that that depth that um the power to activate your field spell once one leaves like both have to leave which is kind of sad but it, it's fair and at, at the end of the day um you're only using it to really search uh like to like to either stop your opponent or to search yourself so um it's 
good ratio at two. You could probably side it out, but you know it's it, it, it's it's main deck because you know it, it has that versatility again. So succession of the true Dracos. This is another card, um, another true Draco card that you can search with your Draconic diagram. Um, you're not going to use the first effect because uh, that that you're you're just not going to use that effect. <laughs> it's like uh, there's no way that you're that a true Draco is being sent to the graveyard and this card is staying because the only other true Draco that you run is Masterpiece. So most nine times out of ten, if you have this on the field, um, you're tributing uh, Succession of a True Draco for a Masterpiece. So um, it's it's not staying on the field. But its other two effects are definitely amazing. So the first, of, uh, the second effect that it has is that during your main phase, immediately after this effect resolves, tribute summon, but not set a true Draco or true Ching monster. So uh, if you have um, Masterpiece in your hand, you can just activate the effect to allow you to tribute summon um, Masterpiece. Uh, the only uh, real condition is that uh, Masterpiece, you know, as long as you have the actual, you know, like summoning conditions ready for Masterpiece, like you have two cards to tribute, pretty much. And uh, since it's an uh, effect that allows you to tribute summon, it's pretty much a, a, a double summon, since it allows you to summon twice. So, like, you can do all your normal summons and do all your shenanigans, and then after that, activate your succession with True Draco, and then get to normal summon out your Masterpiece because of this one card. And you know, lastly, as I mentioned earlier, when it's sent from the field, from the field uh, to the graveyard, you can target one spell chop card on the field and destroy it. So, um, whether it's set rotation, whether it's you're targeting your own combinations, or whether you're using, um, you just want to pop a spell chop card on their side of the field. Uh, Success on the two Dracos. It's definitely a nice card. And um, I, I think it's nice that he like went minimalistic on the true Draco ratios because um, it definitely worked out. It didn't like get in the way of the other decks. So I, I think a lot of thought was put into the way that this deck was made. So I, I really just appreciate how um, he did that. Or she, it could be a she, but it's most likely a he. Like this is a Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, anyway, so uh, we have triple uh, Draconic Diagram. It's kind of like your, your engine of the deck because you pop cards and you search your true Draco card, so whether it be Masterpiece or if you already have Masterpiece, you're going to search a uh, succession of a true Draco. Um, works well with the entire deck, um, no complaints here. Uh, it's kind of the same thing with Cosmo Town. He only plays that too. He side decks the third one. I never really found a situation where I needed, where I felt I needed to side in the third Cosmo Town. Uh, maybe if you're playing like a uh, heroes and you, you face a dark law, then you could side in that third Cosmo Town. But uh, other than that, I don't think there would be a situation. Um, and uh, yeah, you, um, Cosmo Town is a uh, you. You can return your banished uh, Cosmo monsters uh, in case uh, you activated uh, Dracotta Diagram earlier on a Dark Destroyer and the Dark Destroyer got banished. You can if you have uh, Cosmo Town in your hand, you can activate Cosmo Town after and get back that. Uh, Dark Destroyer for a few life points. Um, it kind of shuffles back that hand, so in case you have like uh, multiple uh, ships in your hand or multiple high level Cosmos in your hand, you just shuffle them all back and draw that same number of cards from your deck. So it definitely um, is helpful in that manner. And if it's destroyed while on the field, you get to add a Cosmo card from your deck to your hand, which works especially well with the Metal Foes because Metal Foes uh, pop another card on the field to set their card. So um, using it with Cosmotown was definitely helpful. So we have triple Metal Foes combination. It's the one you're probably going to be setting when you activate your Metal Foes. Maybe, maybe you might set Fusion, but that's only when you need Fusion. Most times you're going to be setting your combinations for two reasons. One is because um, combinations is kind of like a since it's a continuous chop card, um, it's a uh, tribute fodder for uh, your masterpiece and two uh, when it's destroyed so you can set it as, as like bait and when it's destroyed you can search a metal foes from your deck to your hands you like even if you tribute it using a masterpiece you still get to search a metal foes so it just works real nice and it synergizes well and um, yeah um, and in case you ever go into mithrilium which is the metal foes fusion you could recycle your um, combinations or if you don't go into mithrilium you can just use your combinations from Grave. You can banish them 
two pop cards with Masterpiece. So it just all works together. And lastly, we have Call of the Haunted. I never actually used it. Um, I never drew into it. So it's a 43 card deck, so it's kind of understandable. I wouldn't draw into a one of. But um, it's here because of Dr. Destroyer. But most times, Dr. Destroyer is going to be banished. So it's not the best option. It's kind of more because of like Tin Can and KCU. Um, Tin Can and uh, Dark Shore gets sent to Grave, or a good Cosmo gets sent to Grave, that's when you use your Call of the Haunted. And since Tin Can is searchable, um, you're probably going to be, like, it's probably something that may happen often. So, 43 card deck, moving on to the extra deck. Uh, there's not much to explain here, it's just all the Metal Flows fusions. Um, Omega, which is probably the only synchro I made, and I didn't make any of the Exceeds, actually. Um, <laughs> you can replace Diamond Direwolf for Tornado Dragon. Nobody's gonna blame me. But I, I think in this deck, actually, you might want to keep di uh, Direwolf because there may be a situation where you may want to pop a monster um, instead of just spelling trap cards. Um, but yeah, the, the Metal Flows Fusions, uh, the only one I think I went into is Mithrilium. I don't think I went into the other guys. Uh, Alkahest, he's good, but you never really need to go into him. He's something more like... He, he's something that's better with a full Metal Flows Fusion, the Quick Play version. Of Metal Flows Fusion, so it's kind of weird to me that he ran this without running the the Quick Play version. So, um, but yeah, uh, there's Ori Kalk. Uh, I, I think he's decent, but he requires two Metal Flows. And most times, you're not gonna have two Metal Flows, like <laughs> like on the real. Um, you can probably like cut a few of these Metal Flows and just put in like more like Exceeds or um, Link Monsters when Link Monsters come out. Um, the action deck isn't really something necessary in this build. Maybe Omega, maybe Stardust and Scrap Dragon, maybe if maybe one Exceed or two. Um, but it's it, it was never necessary for me because you know Masterpiece does everything by itself. It's like Masterpiece and Doctor Destroyer. That's that's all you need. So next uh, we have the side deck, which is actually one of the first um, <laughs> deck profiles where I I'm actually like talking about the entire side deck. But I didn't make this deck myself, so it's 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 kind of understandable. So we have the side frames. Um, the side frames are here because a you can pop your own cards and leave your field clear. Um, I, I I'll talk about it. I, I talked about it more in my uh, side frames to use as an engine video. Um, so check that out if you really want to see an in-depth uh, explanation to how side frames work. But um, yeah, they're here just to negate monster effects and uh, ghost dash at three in case you're facing a deck that really really focuses on milling and like special summoning. Maybe like Infernoids, maybe Light Sorns, um, maybe decks that do a lot of searching. So there's definitely a lot of that. So one Maxi in the side deck. Um, I don't know why I side it honestly, because it's Maxi. Like is like I think at one it's like main or nothing, because it's like when you play it in a side deck, it's like why why would I put in one Maxi? Like unless my opponent special summons so much, like I would have to be facing like Cardians or something. Like, where they special summon like 30 times in a turn to even consider putting Maxi in at, at one. Like, if I have it at two or three, I can just put it in and be like, okay, if I draw it, then, you know, it can be okay. But at one, I would have to, like, use it. Well, I would have to think about it in a way where um, I can only use it once, you know? It's like, why, why, why would I even play it? Also, to the fact that this is a 43 card deck, so you might not even draw it in general, so. Especially first turn. So uh, at one, I think in, in this build, it's not worth playing unless you unless you decide to main it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Triple Cosmic Cyclone, you know, other true Jaco decks. And uh, Cosmic Cyclone is just an amazing card um, this format. So yeah. Uh, Necro Valley, because A, it's searchable. B, it stops Light Swords. You know, it stops so many Fairy Tales uh, activations that I, I couldn't even count. There are so many times... Well, I, since it's a side deck card, um, when you side it in, um, you don't really like see it like maybe once in a while. But um, when you when you know the deck that you're facing, like game two, game three, and you side this in, and it's like, okay, you activate it, your opponent's just gonna look at you like, what? Because <laughs> um, it does hinder you as well because your cosmos can't banish themselves. Uh, and Masterpiece can't banish to use its effect uh, to pop a card. But at the same time, uh, your opponent can't banish their cards. So if your opponent relies heavily on banishing their cards, like um, 
if they rely on like fairy tale snow for like protection, then they wouldn't be able to do that because they're now necrovalis on the field and uh, they can't banish any monsters from their graveyard. So it definitely is a good floodgate. Um, just, you know, you have to know when to set it in. It's searchable, you have triple terraforming, and you know, you can play with set rotation um, in case you, you just uh, need something to set rotation. So the third Cosmotown, as I said before, uh, maybe if you're facing like a deck that uses Macros or Deep Fissure or Dark Law, then you put it in just to get that extra chance of getting Cosmos back from the Banished Zone, you know. Triple Dimensional Barrier, I also explained. Um, and uh, Imperial Order, lastly, because um, it can negate spell effects and spells are real crucial in this format, so you can use it during your opponent's turn. You don't, mo most times you're going to activate all your spells during your turn anyway, so um, all your cards are going to be good. And then uh, if need be, if you really need to get rid of it, you can distribute it uh, with Masterpiece and um, it just it just works, it just synergizes so well. Honestly, the one time that I played it, my, my opponent just scooped. Like, he, he didn't even, like, try to play the game anymore. He just scooped. He, he just left the duel. And uh, it, it was on, like, second turn. It was, and I and that was actually the, the, the duel that I messed up with uh, Tin Can and uh, Emergency Teleport. And, and this guy just scooped straight off the bat. So, just because I activated a, a single parry order. He was playing Blue Eyes, so I guess it was understandable. But, yeah. Um, that's really all this deck has to offer right now. Um quite an interesting deck um i might do more ocg builds um just copying ocg meta uh, builds more often i mean that thinking that thinking isn't healthy um when you don't know what you're doing but when you take the time to learn and play test the deck for yourself and then you know um use it for yourself that's why you know net decking is something that's real helpful and I, I think a lot of players learn that you know it's like not everybody can come up with these type of strategies by themselves so it's nice that we have like these places where we can just bring our deck ideas to each other and be like hmm that's cool I'll try it out you know yeah um again um well I don't know if I said this before actually uh I'll leave the uh dual videos um in the description if you guys are interested if you even made this far um, if you made it this far, put a hashtag TDMK, um, which stands for True Draco's Metaphors Cosmo. Um, that, <laughs> that's what I used, uh, to, um, when, uh, when saving all these video files, I didn't want to save it, like, as, like, True Draco's Metaphors Cosmo. I didn't want to write that out 10, 10, 30 times, you know, so I just put TDMK. So, put a hashtag TDMK if you made it this far, um, you know, so, so I know who's watching. And who isn't, or if I even should go this far. But, you know, um, there definitely is more deck profiles coming forward this week. Um, quite a few interesting ones. So, um, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.